Today I'm going to bring you some challenging starts for Crusader Kings 3, as the game's been out a while now and sometimes the most difficult moments are the most memorable. So any of these characters will put you on the back foot from the beginning and force you to manage everything perfectly and depend on strong relations if you have any hope of surviving. And I tried to pick characters that have a good mix of fun and difficulty as I'm not really a fan of the starts that are basically impossible and force you to restart every 5 minutes, hoping for that perfect RNG. First up is Count Petro of Minorca in 867, and this one is a really interesting character, as you start with just a single island with a single barony, which is an empty castle, and not even enough courtiers to fill up your court. This character will really test your ability to manage resources and build a powerful army from nothing. Your closest neighbour is Count Johan of Mallorca, who is about three times as powerful as you, and he will most likely pretty quickly create the duchy title, and then, of course, desire your county. So you'll have to be quick and either strike first or make sure you can defend the inevitable attack. You do start as a Visigoth, but shortly after the start of the game, you're forced to convert to the Catalan culture, which is actually great for being on an island as you get maritime mercantilism. So you can build trade port buildings a whole era early and all coastal buildings will give you an additional 10% tax, which of course is great for you. Although being stuck surrounded to the west and the south by Muslim rulers, who if they decide to attack is almost certainly game over, this will test you. But if played correctly, you can create the Duchy of Mallorca and turn it into very profitable land, with a focus on development and coastal holdings, giving you a secure base to take over other lands. Next, we move up to 1066 with King Bagrat of Georgia. Now, this isn't difficult in the typical sense of starting with no money, levies or land. You have all of these. You earn a decent amount of gold. You have well over 2,000 troops and you also start with a kingdom title. Sounds great, right? Well, the problem starts once you zoom out. Being trapped between possibly three of the strongest empires in the game, the Byzantines, the Seljuks and Khamenea, and your kingdom being de jure part of the Byzantine Empire could definitely cause you problems if they ever decide they want your title, or if the Seljuks decide to attack. Although there's some weaker rulers around you, so it could very well be worth taking their titles early and focusing on improving your army fast. I'm not going to go too deep into this character, it's probably the easiest of this list, especially as you could technically swear fealty to the Byzantines, but it is pretty challenging and it's a very fun start, giving you a decent amount of freedom at the start, while you intensely wait for someone bigger and stronger to come and attack. Vali Vandad Mazirazadi of Gurgen may be the toughest start in the entire game, reviving the Zoroastrian faith as one of the last remaining Zoroastrian rulers will be no easy task, and being a vassal to the Tyreed kingdom whose primary faith, Ashuri, considering you hostile, it won't be long until your liege either demands conversion or simply attempts to revoke your title. Although he does start defending a war against the Safarids, which he will most likely lose, meaning your liege loses a lot of power early on, giving you that golden opportunity to expand, build an army and overthrow your liege. But similar to the Georgia start, you're surrounded by much more powerful people who all consider you hostile and your religion evil. But this time you face the added difficulty of a liege who will most likely attempt to revoke your titles, meaning alliances are essential. But you have to make sure your allies like you a lot. Otherwise, they will often refuse to help you out, leaving you alone in a tricky situation. But bringing the Zoroastrian faith to power is one of the most fun challenges you will ever do inside of Crusader Kings 3. Back to 1066, we have Chieftain Amort of Sibir, with the clear goal, of course, being to unite the Empire of Siberia. You can also start in 867 with the exact same county, but I do find 1066 to be a little more challenging, as you have barely advanced since then anyway, meaning you will have to start even further behind the rest of the world, and only 144 years until the Mongols rise fairly nearby, with around 30k troops, and expanding quickly with non-stop 
wars. So you have very few years until they rise and you will need to expand quickly and form a mighty army and build up your defenses ready to defend your land. This one again can go either way. I mean, you can expand a lot and become so powerful you can defeat the Mongols, but a lot of the time you won't and it can definitely be a challenge. So that's why I just really like this one. I think it's just different to all the other ones. You have like an impending doom coming for you and it does bring an interesting challenge. Emir Soldan of the Soldanid Emirate puts you in the forefront of the Muslim expansion into Italy. You start the game defending a war against Italy as well, who has around double your troops. It is possible to win, but it's pretty unlikely. Although the good thing is they only take a single county, so it's not game over even if you do lose this war. So you can still attempt to get the Kingdom of Sicily or even destroy the papacy and take Rome for yourself. This isn't exactly the worst ruler in terms of size and power. You will just need to act fast and you can never be certain the Byzantines won't decide to come for your land. Or once the Carlins get alliances between each other, that Italy won't declare war with his dynasty, leaving you with no chance but to retreat. This is definitely one of the most interesting starts in the game. It's really fun to be at the front lines of the war between the Christians and the Muslims at the borders of Europe. And like I said, if the Carlins do get a bunch of alliances between each other, which they will, it's just going to make it incredibly difficult to push that line and defeat Italy. If you do prefer something a little more challenging or just playing in 1066, but you do like the idea of the last one, Malta could be perfect for you to try. It's one of the worst islands in the game. It only has one castle holding, meaning you will quickly run out of reasons to stay. And if Robert the Fox unites Sicily, there's a good chance he will come for Malta as well to complete his de jure kingdom. Your culture does have some unique men at arms that are just more powerful heavy infantry, which can definitely make your front line strong. And maybe after building the right alliances and waiting for the right time to strike, you can lead the Muslims to power over Europe. Well, if you're not taken out first. Now they were just some characters that are difficult but I also find fun. But on the other hand, for the last mention, of course, the one, the only, Northumbria in 867. Easily one of the most frustrating starts in the game. If you do decide to attempt this, I wish you luck. As you have like 1000 troops and you start the game at war with Ivar the Boneless, Halfdan and Bjorn Ironside. It is possible to survive but you will need to pray to the RNG gods to get things going your way. But a mix between RNG and skill is what it takes to allow King Ayla to hold the line against the Sons of Lothbrook invasions. Anyway, yeah, they were just a bunch of random characters that have some sort of difficulty to them. There are like some characters that are like 45 year old females that, I mean, you just have to hope you get a kid and it's just restarting all the time. So I didn't really want to include them, but yeah, they do exist if that's your thing. But if you have any other ideas for some character lists you would like to see, feel free to let me know in the comments. And of course, I'm going to end the video with a massive thank you to all the channel members. We have Bayek Von Quark, Arcane, Damien, Intermia1, Irrelevant, Luke Jarrett, Zigadelic, Random Icelander, Dover404, Harold Volmar and Victor Voss Anderson. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.